have stayed in a lot of Airbnbs throughout Italy, throughout Rome. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you our top five favorite Airbnbs in Rome, along with our top five overall favorites anywhere in Italy. And the top two are so good that I would recommend even rearranging your schedule, rearranging flights, trains, whatever, to be able to stay in these Airbnbs. It's something special. I look forward to sharing those with you. Let's get started. Before I share our favorite Airbnbs, I first want to share with you why we prefer Airbnbs over hotels, especially the larger, you know, fancy hotels. In Rome and throughout Italy, I think you get a much more authentic experience by staying in Airbnbs over the larger chain hotels. Yeah, there are a lot of great boutique hotels, don't get me wrong, and, and that can make a great option as well. But an Airbnb also gives you the kitchen, which allows you to cook some of your own meals, go grocery shopping, which is a lot of fun in Italy, it really is, to go in the grocery stores, pick up fresh ingredients and come home, make up some things that you just otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to do. And then also, they typically are in uh, more diverse locations. You can kind of really pick your exact location you want to stay in with an Airbnb as opposed to some of the hotels might be kind of in certain areas and not in other areas. And those are the main reasons. I just think it overall gives a much more authentic experience to your visit in Rome. When booking an Airbnb in Rome, there are a few things I think that will really help you. And there's a few tips I wanna share with you briefly. One is book well in advance. You're gonna have a great selection. And even if your plans change and you have to cancel, in most cases, you can cancel up to two weeks in advance and still get all your money back. That's a great thing and a great advantage of Airbnb over several hotels. Many hotels don't give you that option where Airbnb does. Do not book an Airbnb with no reviews or very few reviews. You don't wanna be their guinea pig. If there are no reviews, look for one with reviews. In fact, I like to see at least 50 reviews because then you can start to get an idea of how good that Airbnb really is. And when booking an Airbnb, only book if it has at least a 4.5 or higher. If it's below a 4.5, it's probably not very great. And there's a reason why people are rating that low. In fact, I usually only book Airbnbs if they are 4.7, 4.8, 4.9 or higher. It's easy to find them, especially if you book early. So that would be my first tip would be do not book an Airbnb with no reviews or little reviews and try to get at least a 4.7 or higher. One more thing, when booking your Airbnb, it's very important to put the amount of people in your party that will be using that Airbnb. Because in Rome, and it may be this way in other places too, I'm not sure, but in Rome, there's often a different rate for two people versus three people versus four people and so forth. The more people there are, the higher the nightly rate will be. And you don't wanna book it on accidentally just for two people and then there's four people in your party and then you show up and now they want an extra 50, 75, 100 euros per night because you didn't book it properly to begin with through Airbnb. So make sure you put the right amount of people. That way there won't be any unpleasant surprises when you arrive in Rome and you can start your vacation off on the right foot. Our videos are all about how to help you make the most of your next visit to Rome. Now I'm going to share with you our five favorite Airbnbs in all of Rome, and we've stayed in a lot. In fact, most of the Airbnbs we stay in are kind of forgettable, but these have stood out for the right reasons. I'm 100% confident in recommending them to you, and I'll leave links to each one of these in the description of this video. The first Airbnb I'm going to share with you is called the Spalina Suite Apartment in the center of Rome. And you notice it's got 4.98 stars and there's 134 reviews. So I'm not the only one that's telling you that this is a good place. Everybody that stays there seems to love it. But what I like most about it was it was one of the larger apartments that we stayed in. It's over 100 square meters, around 1,000 square feet just over. May not sound huge, but by Roman standards, this is a big place. But it was very clean, everything in place. The kitchen was wonderful. Let me show you a real quick picture of the kitchen. 
Um, here we go, just real quick. I'll get over. The whole place is great. You can look through that for yourself. But you see the kitchen here, the kitchen's big. It's got everything you need to cook a great meal, great appliances, great utensils, plates, pans, everything you need. It's a wonderful place. And this is the La Chiesa di Santa Maria Maggiore. It's uh, one of the major basilicas in Rome. There's four of them. And the apartment is right down the street, right here. So really close to this big church. But let me back out here a little bit and show you in proximity to the train station. The train station is just right up here at the top. And so it's a short walk down here. This is the Escolino area, which I don't really recommend a whole lot, but this is just on the other side as you enter into the Monti neighborhood. And there's a world of difference between the Monti neighborhood and the Escolino neighborhood. So one of the things you can do from here, you can easily walk over to the Metro station right on this end. This is the A-Line and from there you can go to the Vatican, to the Spanish Steps and so many other places, including Trevi Fountain. Or if you want from the, from, the, uh, from the apartment, you just walk right down this road, right down here, probably, you know, seven, eight minute walk. You can go to the Cavour Metro Station on the B-Line where you can visit the Colosseum, Circus Maximus, and so many other things on the B-Line. So it makes it very convenient for getting on the metros, but just as important, this whole neighborhood here is fun to explore. Lots of things, lots of restaurants, churches, everything you could want in a great home base. The next Airbnb I'm gonna share with you is called Scala 42. Scala 42 has had 150 reviews. It's still at a 4.89, which is fantastic. It's located in the Trastevere neighborhood on, believe it or not, Scala number 42, hence the name. But what I loved most about this was the bed in this place was super comfortable, had great Wi-Fi, huge kitchen, and it had a little outdoor balcony where you could just kind of hang out. Not really get a view, but the rooftops, it's just beautiful out there. Just a really place to relax. Let me show you. Go through these kind of quick for you. There's the interior, there's the nice kitchen. In the kitchen, this picture looks good, but trust me, it's quite a bit nicer in real person. Um, there's the nice master suite, and then there's a bathroom right there that you can get to. Super clean, super convenient. Again, I slept great in this place. It was a really nice bed. And let me show you the patio area. There it is right there. It's not huge, but you can kind of look out over the rooftops. Great place to just go out and relax, eat your breakfast in the morning, come home at night, whatever. Super fun apartment, super great location. Let me show you the location. The apartment is right down here, but what this is, let me show you a little, zoom out a little bit. This is the Trastevere neighborhood, as you can see here. So Piazza Santa Maria is right down here, so it's not far from there. But what's really nice is all of the eateries and fun things to do, the nightlife, Piazza Trelusa right here. Then you can cross the river and you'll be over here towards, this is the uh, Piazza Navona on this end, up on this end you've got the Pantheon, which is right around here somewhere, yeah, right there. Largo Argentina, Campo de Fiori's right here. And on this end, you've got the Jewish ghetto. So much to do, so close, but it's a fantastic apartment. We loved it. Sleep well, it's quiet, but yet it's in the middle of a lot of fun things to do and see. This next Airbnb I'm gonna share with you is actually my wife's favorite. She absolutely loved it. I did too, it is fantastic. It is called Private Lodging for Tourists. Not the best name, honestly, but don't let that fool you. This place is fantastic. It's got a 4.99 rating, 200 reviews. Hosts were super, super nice, helpful, just tons of good recommendations. So if you end up staying here, you will love it, I promise you. But let me show you what's, not the apartment's great, you can look that up yourself, but the location on this is perfect. It's located right in this building right here, like on the fourth floor. But let me show you how convenient. This is Largo, Argentina. My favorite pizzeria is right around the corner called Pizza Florida if you're interested. If you zoom out here, you're gonna see how conveniently located this is. This is where the apartment's at. As you can see, you start to see this is the Pantheon, you know, less than 10 minute walk, Piazza Navona. Down on this end, you've got Campo dei Fiori, you've got the Jewish ghetto over here. Up on this end, you have the Victor Emanuel Monument. Across the river, down here, you've got the Trastevere neighborhood. It's kind of the hub of so much. 
If you enjoy walking and you don't want to hop on that metro, this is an ideal location. If you do need to get a bus, metro's a little bit far, but if you do need to get a bus, buses pass through this piazza here every three, four, five minutes heading towards the Vatican or heading towards the station. Super easy to get transportation, just not the metro. It is a fantastic, fantastic area and Airbnb. If you are enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't enjoy it, then give it a thumbs down. All these Airbnbs, the one thing they have in common, they all have very good locations, they all have very nice kitchens, and they have nice beds. All three of those are very important to me. So if an Airbnb is gonna make my list, it's gotta at least have those. And these are even above and beyond that. This one here is super nice, super convenient. It's got a uh, two bedrooms, two baths, so much. I'll let you click on that to check all the pictures, but I wanna show you the location on this one as well. As far as location, very similar to the last place. Here's Largo, Argentina again, and this particular place is located right in this area here. If you are traveling to Rome in the next one, two, or three years, or know somebody who is, be sure to check out our travel guide. I'll put a link in the description. Before I share our top Airbnbs in all of Italy, I have one more nice Airbnb to share with you in Rome. It's called The Secret Courtyard in Trastevere. It's also located in Trastevere. This was really nice. The courtyard is really nice. It's nice to have a place where you can just kind of sit out, enjoy your breakfast or come home to at night. If you get a chance, go ahead and click on this and check out all the pictures. You're gonna see that it's nice, but in real life, it's quite a bit nicer than what the pictures show, although the pictures aren't bad or anything. Um, but this is a great, great Airbnb. And let me show you the location. It's located in Trastevere. I'll zoom out here a little bit. So here's where we've been up in this area, but this is on this end of Trastevere near the river. But over here, it's just a little quieter. There's still a lot of nice restaurants and fun streets to explore in here. It's just a little more, you know, low key, a little more slower paced, I guess. So you can access the Metro a little bit easier from this end. You can walk across this bridge and the nearest Metro is right here at Circus Maximus. And from there you can head to the station, head to the Coliseum or whatever. That is the closest Metro and it makes it a little more convenient to get on the Metro and when you're on this end of the uh, Trastevere. And then, you know, to get to the rest of the stuff, here's Tyra Island, to get to the rest of the stuff, it's not too far of a walk. You can walk over here and hit all these things, but when you come back, it's a great place just to crash and relax and enjoy. Very nice Airbnb. If you've been to Rome and have a favorite Airbnb or hotel, let us know about it in the comments. Now I'm gonna share with you our five favorite Airbnbs in all of Italy. Two of these, I would have rearranged my schedule just to be in Italy when these are available. If you are heading to Sorrento, I've got a great little boutique hotel for you. Typically, we like to stay in apartments, but in Sorrento, this was such a nice boutique hotel. We've been here twice. We've been to several other different locations in Sorrento. This was our favorite. This is it real quick. Let me show you a couple of pictures. The pictures, I mean, it's clean. It's a super clean place, but these pictures are just kind of, let me show you one, it's kind of odd. Like this one looked a little odd to us, and I wasn't sure what to expect. When you're actually there, it makes a lot more sense. It's a really nice, clean bathroom. You have a little small terrace, not much, but you're looking onto a little teeny street. This one here, it's just really kind of romantic, just really, really kind of cool. Every morning they have breakfast for you when you come in in the afternoon or evening. Sometimes they'll have little cakes or cookies and things like that to eat. They have a little uh, common area for people to gather around. It's not a real big boutique hotel. There's probably, I'm not real sure, but plus or minus 10, 10 rooms is all. Host could not have been more friendly, but what really made this thing stand out is the location. It's right here. This is the old, this is the historic area of Sorrento and it's right here in one of the, can't tell exactly, but it's, it's like right around in this general right here. Super fun area, super great little boutique hotel, highly recommend it. If you're heading to Naples, I've got a great Airbnb for you to try out. We've been there five, six, seven times, different Airbnbs every time. We stayed in this one twice. We've loved it so much, so we have been to this same exact Airbnb twice. It's the one called the Gravina Study and Home. It's nothing special by the pictures, honestly. It's clean and all that stuff. 
it, it's nice. It's nothing that you're going to be going, wow, this is an, an amazing uh, Airbnb or anything, anything like that. But it, it is very comfortable. It's got a nice bed there. It's kitchens, got all of the th uh, things you need in an Airbnb. Very clean, very nice host. One of the things I did like about it is you have your own entryway. It's got, I'll show you a door to the entryway. Right, right there, we just passed it. So this, you enter this door, you walk up some stairs and you're right in your, your Airbnb. It's got a little window to look out over the street. Location is fantastic. If you're familiar with Naples, let me show you here. It's right near the Toledo uh, metro station in Toledo's right here. This particular Airbnb is right in this general area right here. This is the his historical area, so you can just walk down the street, hit all these historical streets and stuff. Such a fun place to walk around, lots of restaurants, all kinds of fun things to do in this area. You've got the, the uh, Spanish Quarter right across the street over here. So this Airbnb is maybe a five minute walk from the Toledo metro station, which is right here. And then there's a little restaurant called Trattoria Nanarella. Uno, due, e tre. And this place is outstanding. If you get a chance, be sure to go there. It's very popular. You have to get there early for dinner, early for lunch. They close a little bit in between, but you're gonna love it. It's a flat fare menu, three course, outstanding but more than just the food it's the entertainment it's the typical i think the typical stereotypical monopoly time very loud very fun and a great meal to boot now we're going to move on to a city called verona you may have heard of it i had never been there until recently but when i did go there about two years ago we fell in love with it the city is absolutely gorgeous lots to see and do there and there's an Airbnb that we stayed in that's a decommissioned church from 1170. Very interesting. But what was really great, I mean, the place was, I mean, completely renovated. It, it just perfect. It really was. Everything was perfect in it. Two bedrooms, bathroom, huge kitchen, nice, you know, gathering room. And uh, the location was outstanding. It is literally right in the middle of everything, but it's in this, like, got its own, like, little courtyard area. It's not a private courtyard, but it's kind of like you walk off the main street, you, there's a little restaurant there, and then there's the uh, apartment right there. Super quiet area, but yet it's in, right in the area of everything. So, if you're going to Verona, I highly recommend you go take advantage of this Airbnb. It really is outstanding. Now we're off to Florence and there are two Airbnbs in Florence that I think they're worth actually arranging your trip when these are available. The first one is here. This one was, was pretty interesting because we got there and I, I knew it was gonna be nice based on the pictures, but we walked into it and I was just surprised at how big it was. It doesn't have just one rooftop terrace. There are two of them. Let me look you through the pictures real quick because this, this front room's great. It's got, uh, let's see really big ceilings. I mean, it's probably close to 2,000 square feet, maybe 130 meters, if that makes sense, something like that. I'm not sure if my math exactly right on those meters, but somewhere in that ballpark, just a huge place. See that? And this is looking down from the bedroom upstairs. Nice big kitchen. Uh, here's one of the terraces, rooftop terraces. You can see the Duomo from it. There's probably a picture showing the Duomo. That's from another angle. You just saw a little bit of it. And there's a second terrace too. Let's see, these are the different bedrooms. This place, I mean, I can't tell you how great it was. It was incredible. And uh, location's great. I'll show you that in a second. Let's see if I have anything else here in pictures. There's, oh, there we are, here we are. So there's the front of it right there. And here's from this other terrace. See that beautiful view of the Duomo? It's incredible. If you have an opportunity to book this, you know, definitely do it. Let me show you where it's at. Here's the Duomo that we just saw over here. And this apartment is right, right about here. And then one of these buildings right here. So just maybe three, 400 meters from the main Duomo in Florence. Ponto Vecchio is very close. It's a great Airbnb. Even if you have to arrange your trip to be there when this is available, it'll be worth it. So our last Airbnb of our favorites 
in all of Italy is also in Florence, and it's one of those ones where I'm not sure if it's better than the last one I just showed you, or this one's better. They're both outstanding. They are worth arranging your trip around. This one is located near Ponte Vecchio, and here, let me show you a quick view. This terrace here is outstanding. It's a very nice place. You come out, you have this terrace, but not just the terrace. Let me show you kind of interesting. You've got a a little like casita at the end of the terrace that you can go into and there's windows out looking over the street down below. Um, there's, it's just incredible. The room's got the high ceilings. It's got that antique type furniture. Feels like you, you know, kind of step back in time. So here's some of the tall ceilings in there. Kitchen was fine. It wasn't as nice as the other kitchen, but it still has all of the, all of the features and amenities you need in a kitchen. But this particular place was incredible. Let me show you a real quick here from another thing. This is kind of a description a little bit about it, but it shows here, which is interesting. I was just reading this, that there's some Francesco's dating back from the 18th century and that it has been, uh, let's see here. It was published in a famous magazine AD among the most beautiful homes in the world. And then there's another interesting fact. It says right down here, Francesco de Medici saw his lover, Bianca Capello, as she passed below. He was up on the balcony and, you know, the rest is history. So I don't know if those are true or not, but it's interesting. The place is incredible. If you have the opportunity to book it, definitely do. If you need to rearrange your schedule to be in Florence when this is available, I highly recommend you do so. I really hope you enjoyed the video. To the next one, alla prossima. Ciao. Thank you.